What's up, everybody? Nat Onyx here with your quick one-minute tip of the day. Though, per usual, today's one-minute tip will most likely take way longer. Now, due to popular request, I'm going to give a basic rundown on the elements that are happening in a percussive style drop. You know that modern trend that people seem to love or hate, depending on what YouTube comment you read. Now, if you listen to the uh, sample at the very beginning of this, that was a uh, kick drum that I made and a synth that I made. Both of those samples, that kick drum sample and that synth, will be available to download in the description below. So I urge you to go check those out. Now, that preset is something very, very similar to a preset I made prior for a percussive style drop. I used it because it worked very well for this tutorial. So if you want to learn how to make that exact sound, I'm not going to show it in this tutorial. It was in a previous tutorial, uh, maybe a week or so back, five or six videos back. So go check that out if you need to. Now basically all I want to do is run through the basic elements that are in these drops and what is making them sound different than your standard drop. Now the first and foremost most important thing is the kick drum. Now I always get kick drum samples so when you're listening for your kick drum sample the most important thing you want for this drop is a kick drum that has a bottom end that rumbles or has a tail is what I call it. And what I mean by that is um, most kick drums or some kick drums at least will have, they'll just go boom 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 no no rumble there's a punch you know there's a density to it but there's no rumble to it you want one that has a low end that lingers and rumbles so it's like boom 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 etc etc the reason why you want that is because there is no baseline so to speak in these tracks and there's definitely no sub baseline that's playing now some people might have a sine wave layered in there which i will explain later but for the most part it is just big ass kicks that take up most of the spectrum. Now in the sample that I gave you I actually ended up layering two kicks. The bottom one was just a you know a big rumbly bottom kick and the mid one is one I want to actually talk about a bit. The mid kick, I don't have the, the sample in front of me here but I have the EQ curve for it. So I cut out all this low end because the other sample was taking the majority of that and then the other sample had no, didn't have a lot of sound right in here so I went ahead and added a kick on top of that and put volume in this range right here. Now when you're making a kick, uh, a kick drum for this style of drop, you want to make sure that there's volume pretty much in the full spectrum of sound all the way across the board. The reason is because the kick drum takes up the majority of the track and the kick drum is the defining element on the drop. You're not going to have very many other synths in there. You're probably going to have maybe some hi-hats, maybe a snare, and you know later in the drop and you'll probably have one or two synths and a riser that's about all you get on these so you really need your kick drum to be up front center and take up the majority of the space in the mix and I added this kick on top here because there was a gap in the other sample right here so when you're layering your kick drums look for gaps in the EQ that you can you know creatively EQ another drum into that if that makes sense so to recap that part, basically for these percussive drops you need a you need a kick drum with a tail and you need to make sure that your samples either use one that's full spectrum or layer them so they're full spectrum so there's parts of kick sound in the entire range of noise, uh, range of sound, if that makes sense. Now another thing you can do is when you're making these, just say you have a kick sample and uh, it's, it's good but there's not a big tail on it. You can simply go into Massive or whatever VST you want lay out a pattern such as this most likely in the key of your track and these can act as your tail I don't even know what that sound is but uh, anyways I don't know what's playing um, anyways these can act as your tail and your rumble usually a sine wave works best sometimes a triangle you might even use a saw wave or a square wave with the cutoff you know pointing down basically these are gonna be more so for feel and not so much sound you won't really hear them though in uh, the animals tune um, there is it sounds to me kinda like a uh, a saw wave or a sine wave that's cut off um, you can kinda hear it in there but he mixed it so incredibly well that I can't tell if it's in the kick drum or it's actually a synth that's hitting alongside the kicks and that's another important part about these drops the reason they have such an impact and they sound so good is they are mixed 
fabulously. They are mixed very, very well. Uh, you can make the exact same drop, and you can tell my sample it's not mixed as good, even though I made it in about two minutes. And that is a side note. I uh, I made this, I made that kick sample, and I made that uh, intro sound in about two or three minutes. So uh, take that as it is. But anyways, they're mixed so well, and that's why I have the huge impact. But again, make sure you you know when you're building this, you have a kick drum that has a tail. If you don't have a tail, you can make a tail using this. Basic waves work well. 50 to 75 hertz range will give you that rumble, um, and that should give you. You can obviously adjust the attack and the uh, release and the sustain. Uh, if your sample doesn't have, you know, if the synth you're using doesn't have enough rumble, re make the re release go up higher so it, uh, you know, I'll have more tail, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, I'm not really going to go over too much about the actual synth itself because I already have a video that, had, that explained the, uh, quote unquote, that explained this synth. But uh, as you heard in the beginning, it is just the, this plug sound. Uh, all it really is is a square sign, that woody thing. Uh, like I said, I'll give you the preset. I have another video explaining this. Uh, just a, a couple uh, quick um, notes. Usually on this track and some other tracks I've heard, they have a good amount of reverb. You want good. You want a reverb because you need the stereo image to be quote unquote spread around so it doesn't sound so lifeless and dull. Um, add, add a good amount of reverb. You might even want to route the re uh, have you know have a dry one playing and then route a reverb to a sin track so you have one dry synth and then you also have just one reverb track synth if that makes sense so you have the synth playing and then you have another channel that has the synth going to that and the main channel and then you have a reverb on that channel so that the reverb isn't masking the main synth it's just kind of lingering in the background um, hopefully that made sense maybe I'll do a video on that at some other point in time if I just confused everyone but yeah that's the basic gist of these synths you want to make sure you have your attacks you know, oops, uh, your attacks, uh, you're not attack, you're, you're attack down obviously, but your decay and level down gives it the pluck sound, and I said I've gone over these before, so uh, I'm not going to do that again, but yeah, that pretty much uh, sums up the gist of these drops, really, really, really the most important thing is just don't overthink them, get a nice kick drum sample, and go from there. Don't try to add a bass line and other stuff. I've gotten some uh, examples. People are like, why does mine not sound like theirs? I'm like, well, you have, you know, you have two bass lines playing and you can't, you know, you just can't fit all that stuff. And also, the less stuff you have in the track, the louder you can get it, quote unquote. So yeah, I hope this helped you guys. Um, I'm sorry there's not much more I can explain in this. It's really not that complicated. Again, the magic is just uh, really good mixing and, you know, some, oh, I guess I can go over the compression. Uh, the compression, a couple of quick notes on compression on these things. When you're compressing, the, I don't always compress kicks, but you know, for a track such as this, you might want to compress the kick and adjust the attack, re uh, the attack release settings. Mainly, you might want the release setting to be a little bit, le a little longer than normal, so it's not as pumpy. So the release is, you know, higher than you normally would have it. Um, this is something that I'm doing when I'm do when I do four four house kick tracks. I usually have to release faster compared to like a dubstep tune, but uh, or just a tune that's not in 4/4. And um, the same thing here. Since you want the kick to linger, you know, have the release uh, longer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Little things like that. But other than that, there's nothing uh, really special going on. So the main parts: kick, big sine wave under it. Uh, if the kick doesn't already have it, long release settings on the compressor, and just mix the kick really friggin' loud, and then. Uh, when you're all said and done, crank those compressors down so it gets some volume, and uh, that should about do it. Uh, maybe if, at a later date, if people have some questions, I'll try to explain it better. I wasn't really 100% sure where to go, but uh, yeah, I hope this helps. And don't forget you can download that kick sample and that preset in the description, uh, so check those out as well. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Peace.